Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We have here a Cub Cadet 3X 26 inch snow thrower. This is actually a three stage, and the reason why they have three stage, and I'll show you here, is that we actually have three stages, okay? We have the augers in the front, we have an auger in the back that throws it out, and then they put this third auger here, I guess it's, they call it three stage, and actually this auger here is missing a pin because it's supposed to be connected to the front here by a shear pin. So that, that's one right there. You just have to see that this one here has a shear pin missing. It's supposed to be connected to the shaft. We'll take care of that later. Um, but it has two augers in the front here that actually pull it in. And then the back auger behind there actually throws it out the chute. And then we have the augers in the front that are also pulled in. So this is a, a new style three stage. Since I'm down here, I might as well throw my pitch for the silicone. Heavy duty silicone or just silicone in general, you can buy it at any you know, hardware store. I would definitely recommend spraying it all around in here before you before you use the machine. You can spray it everywhere. Everywhere you can put it in here, it's going to help for the non-stick conditions as far as uh, wet snow. Anything that sticks in here, spray it in here, spray it inside this chute right here. Just get it all sprayed in. Now remember, you have to do this every time you use the machine, so it's definitely something you want to do um, prior to using the machine and then every time after. Okay, you want to check the oil first, which is here. You have a gas tank here, but you want to check the oil. Okay, now this has a dipstick that you can actually get stuck if you're not careful. The first thing you want to do is pull it out, and then you want to check the um, check where the oil's at. In between the dots, there is a little bar graph on one side, but you just want to make sure you're probably at the upper side of the, um, the, the dots. Um, just don't want to have it too full, but also you don't want to have it low. It actually says high and low. I like it right on the top side of the dot right there. The thing about this is that it has a it has two little nubbies right there and one nubby on this side right there. Now the dipstick itself, the dipstick tube has two nubbies right here and then one here. You just want to make sure that you get this back into position where it's supposed to be or you can get it stuck. So you just want to make sure you line it up correctly, twist it in, pull it out, and check again. And this is right on the mark. Okay, so we're good. Oil's fine. Make sure this is a gas tank, make sure you're full of gas here. Uh, we have an electric starter over here, and I do, with the electric starter, you're going to have a cord. The cord should come with it when you buy the machine. This is, I'm pretty sure this is a 14 gauge wire, uh, 12 or 14 gauge is recommended up. This is, I think this is 14, okay, no more than 10 or 15 feet, okay, that's important. The reason being, these starters here are electric, and they do draw a lot of amperage, so you don't want to run 100 100 foot of cord when you're trying to start your machine up. That will burn up the starter. You don't want to do that. You start these right next to your garage or wherever you have power to the house. Just plug it directly into an outlet. 15 feet cord max. And uh, as far as this one goes, I'm just going to use the cord that came with the machine. And you just line them up, put them in, plug this into the wall, and then you push the button. This button here only turns over the engine. That's all the starter does. It spins the engine. It doesn't start the engine, it just spins the engine over, and then you have to go over to the controls um, that I was gonna show you in a second here to get it started, okay? So we're gonna go back up to the handles here. You have drive handle on this side, which is for your wheels. You have the auger handle on this side, which is to control your auger. Now, people are gonna put these handles down, and when you let go of the one handle, it doesn't come back up. And that's the reason being is that if you have to maneuver this, you can actually have the auger still spinning by you know just having one hand on the machine now i was born with one hand it has nothing to do with what i'm saying here uh, but you can let go of this, the drive handle and then it'll also flip it up okay so when you lock it down this one doesn't the wheel lock won't lock okay so you can have them both down the wheel lock never locks it's the auger lock that will lock so push down your wheels hit the auger lock and it it's the um it'll hold the auger in in the go position um i did notice that this is actually it looks it's a little confusing okay so what it's saying here is that when you put down the wheel handle it locks see the little lock on there it's locking your augers in okay now to let the augers up just lift up this handle and it will unlock your augers just keep that in mind don't get a uh, weird that you, it got locked down for some reason it's stuck that's not the case just let, let go of that handle they both come up this is the auger like i said you have your speeds here you have reverse, two two reverse speeds here, and then you have six speeds forward. Okay, I definitely recommend to just put them in gear before you go. I'm pretty sure you can 
you can um, use them while you're running. You don't have to stop the machine, but I, I would, you don't have to, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, if you just want to be safe and sorry, just put it into a gear before you go and you just let up on your handle, put it in gear, put the handle down, away you go. This guy here is for your, your shoot forward and backward. Okay, so that, that puts that puts the angle of where you're gonna shoot it, how far out you're gonna shoot. And that's what this handle's for. Handle below here is for left and right positioning of the shoot. So it's left and then right. Okay, that just gives you the and when you stop, you know, when you stop with it, it just stays where it's supposed to be. So it's not like it locks in, but it does stay where it's supposed to be when you stop moving it. We have two control levers, one on this side and one on this side. Okay, now in the front here, right above the headlight, it says power steering. Now, this is all what that's about. Okay, so when it says power steering, basically what these are, these machines are locked, they're locked in the posi, which means that both wheels are always turning. All right, so when you go to turn this thing, especially on dry pavement, it's really hard to turn them because both wheels are actually locked in posi, posi control. So that means that both wheels are locked. So if you want to turn easily or make a turn while you're blowing snow and you have a hard time moving it, Okay, you flip one of these levers up, so hold one lever up, and that will unlock that wheel. So it will allow you to move left or right with ease. Okay, so that's real easy now. And if you're going the opposite direction, then you have to, you know, you want to use this lever, then you unlock this other one, and it locks this, it unlocks this other one. So between both of those handles, depending on what hand you have on the, you know, operator's handle, it will allow you to turn easier. And then when you're going straight, you let go of those handles and it actually locks in the posse and it'll give you the best pull or actually the best go power as far as getting into the snow. And then there is a nice feature on this one, which not many have. Underneath here, okay, it has a switch, okay? And it does say which way is on and which way is off. But if you see this little, that's actually heat. Okay, this is actually hand warmers for the handles. It's a very nice feature and you just have to put it in the on position and the hand warmers are right in here. So uh, two wires come in here and they literally will just warm up as you're using the machine. It is nice to have in very cold climates and I definitely, I've used these before and it's a very nice feature. Just remember when you're not using it, turn it off, even though you're not gonna, it's just a good habit to get into. You're not gonna burn anything up. There is no battery in here. You can't, you can't overheat up these handles. I'm pretty sure you can't. It just runs when the engine's running. So technically, I guess you could keep it on, but just uh, it's just me. Just turn it off when you're done. But just flip it on. It'll warm these up gradually as you're working. The longer you're running the machine, the warmer these get. Uh, I don't think of anybody's ever burnt themselves, but uh, I don't think they get that hot. As far as starting the machine goes, we go down to the controls down here. Okay, there's throttle, which is down here, and you have stop. Okay, you want to make sure you're not on stop because it will not stop or it will not start if it's on stop. All right, so you have full throttle and turtle of course is slow rabbit of course is fast i usually start them about three quarter throttle i don't like to start them at full just because i don't like to start a cold engine up at full speed it's just good to warm it up a little bit before you do throttle all the way up but i definitely would say throttle all the way up when you're ready to blow snow this is the on and off button okay this is just a safety button that has to be in it's a key a plastic key it has to be pushed all the way in or it will not start Okay, in a pinch, you can pull that out and shut off the machine real quickly if you ever get a clog in a snowblower or something. I recommend drilling a hole through this, putting a piece of twine onto it, and then hanging it onto the uh, the bar somewhere so you don't lose this key. If you pull it out and drop it in the snow, you're not going to find it. In, you may find it, you may not find it. It's a good habit just to drill a hole in that, put a piece of string to your handle, tie it to the handle, and you're good. You have a primer bulb here. The primer bulb was designed just to push fuel into the opening of the carburetor, which gives it a burst of fuel at the beginning when they're very cold and cold outside. They don't like to start. All right, then you have your typical choke, which is up here. There is a little arrow on top of this, and it's a little hard to see it, but that arrow points this way, and that means on. So when the choke over here is actually closed, which means it's on, all right, that's a closed choke position, that's going to be on. That's where you're going to want it when you start it. And then when you, after you start it, turn the choke off, you may need to keep it on a little bit when it's really, really cold outside. They may not run properly for a little while. And that's why full throttle isn't recommended until it warms up, just because it, it's going to stop on you many, many times over if, if you don't have it warmed up at, at full throttle. It just happens because the carburetors have to warm up a little bit. So choke on. Okay, we have our throttle set at three-quarter throttle or half throttle. You're going to prime it once or twice. The pull cord is on the opposite side. 
gonna give it one pull and as soon as it starts up we're gonna take the choke off or maybe two pulls As you can see, this has a headlight. It's very nice to have a headlight, especially if you're doing a lot of work at night. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how the electric start works. Like I said, you get your 10 or 15 foot cord, you plug it into the wall. Then you're gonna plug it into your outlet of your machine. And as I said before, it just, it just cranks the engine over. It doesn't start the machine. So what you have to do is you gotta come back over here and do your same scenario. You gotta make sure it choke is on. Make sure your throttle is set at either half or three quarter. I'm not gonna prime it because it may not need it now, but you prime it a couple of times in cold conditions. Make sure your knob here is on. And then you're just gonna push the button. As soon as it starts up, you're gonna take the choke off and then un you can pull the cord out as soon as it starts. <laughs> start the machine and operate it i hope that's uh hope that took care of most of everybody's questions thank you for watching the video please give it a thumbs up if you liked it please subscribe and thanks for watching